Hi there, I'm Duncan and uh, today I'd like to read you a story and I've got a little clue as to what that story might be. I'd like to introduce you to my friend Jai Jai, he's a little bear and as you can see he's got particularly starey eyes. He could hypnotise you couldn't he if you stared at them for too long. So in case you haven't guessed yet, the story I'd like to read is none other than The Bear Who Stared which was the first book that I uh, wrote and illustrated quite a few years ago now. So some of you might know it already, a lot of you may not. So um, hope you enjoy it nonetheless. There once was a bear who liked to stare and stare and stare. Now look at that for a pair of starey eyes. It would be very hard to outstare the bear, wouldn't it? See if you can. No, I blinked already. I'm no good. See if you can do better than I did. Every day, bear emerged from his cave and stared at the first thing he saw. One morning, he stared at a family of ladybirds who were having their breakfast on a small leaf. So down here we can see the family enjoying a little picnic uh, with egg and soldiers and croissants and marmalade on toast and all the tasty morsels you'd expect ladybirds to eat first thing in the morning. What are you staring at? squeaked the daddy ladybird. We're trying to have our breakfast in peace. And as you can see the daddy ladybird is not too happy and he's shaking his fist in anger at the bear. And with that they scuttled off to find somewhere else to eat. Bear strolled further into the forest and climbed a big tree. He stared at a bird feeding her chicks in their nest. So here we can see Bear. He shoved his head right into that tree to see what's going on. Can I help you? asked the bird. Bear didn't answer. He just stared. And there he is staring at the bird. The chicks didn't like Bear staring at them. He was putting them off their dinner. Go on, shoo! squawked the bird. Get down on the ground where you belong. Bear climbed back down to the forest floor where he spied a badger set. He poked his head into the entrance and I'm sure you can guess what happened next. Here you can see Bear sticking his head into the entrance of the badger's home. Oi, stop gawking, barked the badger, and he bit poor Bear on his nose. He was a particularly angry badger. Bear pulled his head from the badger set with a pop and skulked off, rubbing his sore nose. Here we can see Bear trudging through the forest and he's not looking particularly happy. Neither would you be if a badger just bit you on the nose. Before long, Bear found a log to sit on by a large green pond. He sat and pondered by the pond. Bear didn't mean to annoy all the other animals. He was just naturally curious but too shy to say anything. I've seen that look before, said a small croaky voice coming from the pond. Bear looked down and saw a plump little frog. Bear stared at the frog. There he is staring directly into his eyes. The frog stared back with his big goggly eyes. And there you can see the frog is a good match for Bear. His eyes are just as staring. Not much fun being stared at, is it? continued the frog. I suppose not, muttered Bear. It's just that I don't know what to say to anyone before I've had a chance to think. It's too late. Bear stared into the water and saw another bear staring back at him with the same wide curious eyes. He looked just like Bear in every way, but this bear wobbled and was a strange green colour. Wonder what that could be. 
Then something extraordinary happened. The green bear blinked and his mouth turned into a smile, which turned into a big, happy grin. You see, said the frog, sometimes a smile's all you need. I may have big, goggly, starey eyes, but I also have the widest smile in the whole forest. Then the frog showed Bear his biggest, widest, happiest smile before diving off into the water. Plop! As the frog disappeared, so too did the wobbly green bear. The next day, Bear trudged out of his cave. He saw the ladybird family enjoying their breakfast on a small leaf. And if you look closely, there are the teeny ladybirds just about to find their favourite breakfast spot. The daddy ladybird was just about to gather up their things and leave when Bear said, Hello! with a big smile on his face. Oh, hello! replied the daddy ladybird, and he smiled back. Bear strolled happily off into the forest. Bear made lots of new friends that day and did not feel the need to stare. Although, he did have one new friend who didn't mind Bear staring at him and he was just as good at staring back. That's the end of the story of the bear who stared. So as you can see, a bit like Jai Jai here, he had very starey eyes but he wasn't being rude, he was just a bit shy and a bit unsure of himself. So when Frog taught him that it's okay to be a bit shy, and it sometimes just helps to smile and say hello, Bear soon learnt that it was actually a lot easier to make friends than he thought it was. So I'm sure that's something we can all relate to. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. So today I thought we'd start by learning how to draw the bear from the bear who's dead. Now, obviously, his key feature is his big staring eyes, so I thought that's a good place to begin. So, quite easy to draw. Two circles with dots in the middle. Now, when I first started drawing the bear, I imagined he was posing for a passport photo, because... Um, I don't know if any of you ever had a passport photo taken, but they tell you to stare ahead blankly with an expressionless face, which is quite weird because that's not a natural way to be. So I drew the bear looking like that, and that's how the character came to life, really. So there we go. We've got some pretty blank staring eyes. And after that, we're going to do his eyebrows. Now, his eyebrows are very expressive in the story because he doesn't give too much away with his other features. So eyebrows are a good way of telling if someone's happy, sad, or bored, or excited. And his eyebrows are going to be quite flat because they're, he's going to look quite starey and expressionless in this picture. So they're basically two rectangles and I draw some stripes in them. Next, his nose. Now his nose is a big triangle bit for the bridge of his nose. And you have a horizontal line and a curved bit. Now, um, when I've been drawing this before and been going through it with children, one of them said that his nose looks a bit like an upside down ice cream, which I suppose it does in a way. If you imagine that bit's the cone, here's the ice cream. Of course, with it being upside down, that can mean only one thing. You've dropped it and it's gone splat on the floor. So we don't want that to happen. That would make you cry if anything would. So we're going to colour in the ice cream bit now, which is actually his nose, not ice cream. There you go. And now we're going to do his mouth. Vertical line down, and then two little diagonal lines for his mouth. Also, speaking of what it might look like, I sometimes think this looks like a matchstick man with no arms wearing a dunce's hat. But you might not get that analogy, so move on. So next, the muzzle around his mouth. It's just a sort of fuzzy dashed line to make it look furry. Like that, there we go. So we've got a quite good, starey bear face. Now we need the rest of his head. Uh, so we'll start with a little tuft of hair on, on top. There we go. Then we'll start to draw the top of his head. 
But before we go too far, we've got to remember his ears. So his ears are round with little bits of tufty hair like that, one on each side. Brilliant. And now we're going to go down. We're going to put a couple of zigzag bits in to show his fur. One on the other side. Now obviously, if I'm going too fast, what with this being a video, feel free to stop, pause, rewind, whatever you like. And also, if you think I'm going too slow, you can uh, play in double speed and fast forward it if you like, if you're a really quick drawer. Uh, do what you like, really. So now, inside his ears, we have a little curly line, like so. One on the other side. Brilliant. And now all that's left is some little dashes to show his furry texture. Do them all over his body. Now later on, if you like as well, you could colour your bear in. In my story, my bear is a sort of orange colour. Uh, but you could do him any colour you like. You could be brown, green, blue, whatever you fancy. So there we go. The bear who's dead. Enjoy drawing it. Mm -hmm.